We gather today to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Please silence any electronic devices and let us take a moment to quiet ourselves as we prepare now for our worship. Entrance hymn is 744. Sing, oh sing. 744. Please stand. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Sidia and reached Pamphylia and after proclaiming the word of Perga, they went down to Atala. From there they sailed to Antioch where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how we opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, and you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. I was wondering in my thinking and my praying about the scriptures, if Jesus was here today trying to gain disciples, would he use Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? Hmm, I wondered. I thought a little bit further and I said, well, you know, I guess he would discard the likes because that's just someone, you know, liking. But maybe if you befriended him on those, it would be different. Maybe as a friend, you would be considered a follower instead of just someone who gives you thumbs up when you post something. I know it's weird, but that's the way I think sometimes. In our gospel today, we have the new commandment that Jesus gave us. We're all familiar with that. And I was thinking about friendships. And there are particular friends that I have that I can just about and probably have always told them everything that was going on with me. And obviously one of those is my wife. Um, but to the degree that my vulnerability is out there. And I have this trust about those friends that they'll hear and listen to what I'm saying and respond or not respond. To me, that's the type of friendship I think we're called to with Jesus to hear what he asks us to do. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, how am I going to hear what he has? He doesn't say, uh, Joan, please open the door. Somebody's there. No. If we pray, God's spirit infused in us because of our sacraments, allows us to be prompted. And it's the prompting of the Holy Spirit, to be quite honest with you, that led me to be a deacon. Because if you ask my friends at the time, and even my wife, I really didn't want to be anything except a father and a husband. And then, through prayer and with the help of a spiritual director, was led to pray and open myself up to that. Following Jesus isn't easy because it causes us to think about what we do, what we say, and sometimes even how we say it. When Jesus gives us the command to love one another, that's an unconditional type of love, which I think in our world doesn't exist anymore except between friends. 
because everything that goes on in our world is not unconditional. It's very conditional. It's quid pro quo. That's our lifestyle. I'll do this, and you'll do that for me. I'll do this, she'll do that for me. It's not like that with our God. Our God wants us to be connected to him as one with Father, Son, and Spirit. And that's what our sacraments, initiated by Jesus, call us to do. When we had first communions today, we had 14 very, very nervous kids. Now, I prompted them, obviously, and I gave them unconsecrated hosts so they could get used to what it feels like to take it in their hand, in their mouth, and to consume. But they were still nervous, afraid of doing the wrong thing as if I was going to jump up and say, you didn't do it right. Can you imagine if I had done that? <laughs> That's openness to friendship. Being open to God as our friend calls us to relate to everyone. Yes, we're not called to do the wrong. We're called to do the good. Loving is difficult. If any of you are in a family, you know that that's a true statement. I have an Italian family. Believe me, Maron, as Deacon Monty used to say, what a mess our family can sometimes be. And the reason is because we don't have unconditional love. We can't listen to that stuff. So we got to get away from it. But we're called to the depths of our being to hear what that person is saying and to pray for that person to be guided properly. So we all have that responsibility. It's Jesus's command. Today, as we receive the Eucharist and we take Jesus in, let that mantra, love one another as I have loved you, ring in our ears so that when we leave this place, which is safe because his presence is here, and we go outside where his presence is lacking, we will be his presence. We are to be like the disciples in Acts of the Apostles, doing the business of our God out in the world. It's not just priests and bishops and deacons and popes. It's everyone who has been baptized responsibility. So let our responsibility be increased today by us receiving the Eucharist. And let's be in the world the lovers that Jesus wants us to be, even when it's tough, even when it's hard, even when it seems impossible. Pray in those instances that the Spirit enliven you, quiet you, and allow you to love whatever that situation or person is bringing to you. Remember, love one another as I have loved you. Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, like
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray that God will strengthen us and all believers to show our love for others through active service. Our response is, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been baptized into Christ this Easter, and for all who receive First Holy Communion and Confirmation during this Easter season, we pray to the Lord. As in Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries and for leaders in God's church, that all who follow the example of Saints Paul and Barnabas may bring many to the way of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer persecution, torture, or unjust imprisonment, and for their friends and families, that God may wipe the tears from all faces, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Teresa D'Andrea, that they may find healing in the knowledge that they are loved by God, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Marguerite Genovese and Dolores Conda, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our prayer intentions book, and the prayers that we keep in our hearts. And for Ron Peerich, Kay Keenan, Agnes Brandt, and Evelyn O'Connor, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, be our prayer. God of love, may we imitate your risen Son and follow his command to love. Make us more like him through this Eucharist we celebrate, for he lives and reigns.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command informed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is 492. Behold the Lamb, 492.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Members for our St. Vincent de Paul Society will be available after Mass to collect your donations for the poor and needy of our community. Thank you for your continued generosity. And as always, remember to take home a bulletin when you leave. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn, 314, Alleluia, Love is Alive. 314.